Fox 50 Sports presentation, MASH, won't be seen at this time. Now stay tuned as the Detroit Pistons take on the New York Knicks, next on Fox 50. This season has been a frustrating puzzle for Coach Chuck Daly and the Pistons. They have struggled to find the necessary ingredients to contend for the NBA crown. Sunday's victory versus Miami at the Palace showcased outstanding shooting, suffocating defense, and a Piston team that constantly made the extra pass. It may provide a spark for the final two weeks of the season. Pat Riley has brought his Laker work ethic and Midas touch to Gotham City, where the Atlantic Division Knicks have become legitimate contenders behind all-star center Patrick Ewing and a strong supporting cast. Madison Square Garden, the mecca of basketball, will be rocking tonight as these two rivals collide in an Eastern Conference showdown. Live from Madison Square Garden in New York, you've got the Pistons and the New York Knicks. And this one is critical for both teams when it comes to Eastern Conference playoff positioning. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another exciting night of NBA basketball. The Boston Celtics, the New York Knicks, and the Pistons involved maybe in a three-way war. The Knicks trying to hang on against the Celtics, the Pistons trying to catch Boston. I'm George Blaha along with Ron Rustin in New York, and Ronnie, this triangle involving these three teams is wild. So is this city, George, and you know it. But it could get very interesting down the stretch if New York can just hold their ground at home they're in good shape to win the Atlantic Division let's take a look at the games remaining for these squads now the Knicks magic number against the Celtics is four and you know the Pistons trail Boston by one and would lose the tiebreaker as they're trying to catch the Celtics and get the fourth spot overall in the East and home court advantage in round one the Pistons with Three at home, four on the road. Ditto for Boston. And surprise, the same for the Knicks, who go to Boston tomorrow. Now, the Celtics are in action tonight in Cleveland. So whoever wins on this floor, providing Cleveland does its job at the Coliseum, it gains some ground. Well, Cleveland has very, been very hard for Boston, especially at Cleveland. And, you know, the Knicks, five straight over the Pistons in recent memory. And... They've got the big guy. The big guy in the middle is having a great, great season, and he's such a major force at both ends of the floor. Well, Patrick Ewing, one of the finest scorers, rebounders, shot blockers in this league, and uh, he's the kind of guy you can build a franchise around. And this season, with Pat Riley in here coaching him, they've won 48 and lost 27. More important, though, they appear to be peaking at the right time They've won nine of their last 11 games. Well, they have great chemistry. They've got an interesting young player in John Starks coming off the bench, giving them instant offense. Anthony Mason comes off the bench and gives them great play at both ends of the floor. And, you know, interestingly enough, those two kids finish almost every game. 
if they're not starters. Then you add Oakley in his rebounding, and Mark Jackson, who's just having the best year since his Rookie of the Year performance. Uh, Pat Riley came in, gave him the ball, and he said, go, Mark, you're my man. Well, the Pistons, as you know, were staggering and stumbling until Sunday night at the Palace against Miami. What a show they put on to get win number 43. They'll now have nine straight winning seasons, and they are in the playoffs, and they put up enough points on Sunday to make it 17 wins and 19 tries when they score 100 or more. Well, normally what happens when they're scoring 100 points, the distribution of the ball is usually very good. 36 assists, a season high Sunday, only six turnovers, a season low, field goal percentage over 50%. Uh, just everything was clicking, and playing that suffocating defense really had Miami out of sync, and this is what the Piston team really needed, and hopefully they can build on that and now go in to tonight and maybe get a win here in the Garden. In the two games so far this year, the Knicks have really dominated, especially off the glass. Two games averaging 46 rebounds to the Pistons' 36, out shooting them from the field, free throw percentage about the same, well, look at that point average, 101 to 93. That's a big eight points. That's big uh, when you're going head-to-head -head and you're trying to beat another playoff opponent. Well, if the Pistons are to win this thing in here tonight, they're going to have to play excellent basketball because I'm almost sure New York will. And we could have a great game. I don't know if you hear that song in the background. It's this old heart of mine. If the Pistons do play well, I don't know if this old heart of mine can take it. This could be a great game. Well, I, I know you might have a little trouble, but I'll, I'll carry you, baby. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll be back in a moment on the Pistons Television Network. Mark Jackson's wife, Desiree Jackson. She's the only one they'd let take that long to sing the anthem. <laughs> Powerful job, though. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Let's see him. Charles Oakley and the X-Man. Xavier McDaniel at the forward spot. 
with those two strong men at the forwards and Patrick Ewing in the middle in the backcourt. Gerald Wilkins and Mark Jackson for Pat Riley. Chuck Daly and the Pistons will counter with a starting lineup that looks like this. At the forwards for the Pistons, Dennis Rodman and Orlando Woolridge in the middle. Brooklyn Bourne, Spider Sally, Joe Dumars and Isaiah in the backcourt for Chuck. More in a moment on the Pistons Television Network. Ron Rothstein, what are the keys to winning? Well, first of all, George, when these two teams get together, you got to be able to score. I think the first team to 100 points is going to win the game. I will secondly, get that on the screen for you in a moment. Secondly, you've got to keep Patrick Ewing under some semblance of control. The guy scores 24 a game. He averages 11 rebounds, almost three block shots, a major force at both ends, and you just can't let him run wild. Lastly, got to do a better job on the glass. They hold a big 10 rebound a game average in the two contests so far this year and the Pistons just have to step up and even that up if they're going to have a chance here to win tonight. All right score 100 contain Patrick and uh, try to do some board work. Those are the keys according to Ron Rothstein. I got a couple other things you want him. No go ahead. There he is Patrick in his seventh year. It'll be that long already out of Georgetown. Here come the Pistons off that clinic game on Sunday at the Palace against Miami. Interesting matchups. You got Isaiah and Mark Jackson. You got Joe D and Gerald Wilkins. John Sally will start on Patrick Ewing. Let me ask something, George. You think that when Mark goes home, he's got to listen to the anthem again? <laughs> They're going. They taped it. No question. There's Chuck Daly, says his uh, back is uh, about 50% better than it uh, was yesterday. And much, much better than it was the day before. Pat Riley with the best regular season winning percentage in NBA history. Over 72%. Jess Kersey, Bob Delaney, and Jack Neese are the officials. New York goes to work with it first. In the post. And Ewing is two time. Jackson tripped. Wilkins misses. Worm taps it. Out of bounds. Bob Delaney looking for help with that call. He'll get it from Jess Kersey. It'll belong to the guys in blue. Real good job of trapping and rotating. John Sally had to come out and play Mark Jackson and did not allow him to beat him off the dribble. They looked for Joe behind a warm screen. Now he finds him. Wilkins fought his way through it very well. Clock at eight. Isaiah works the baseline, gets around Jackson, blind dishes to Worm. He'll touch it to Spider Sally. Deep in the corner to the captain for three. No, two. He was standing on the three-point line. Zeke doing a good job of catching and shooting with the shot clock running down. Caught the ball real well. Wilkins over Joe, and it's 2-2. Two -two. Joe Wilkins is uh, one of the, the best streak shooters in the NBA. You just don't know which way he's going, but as of late, he's really been struggling. They're fundamentally very sound. He's struggling. There's still one. Out of bounds. Pistons look a little flat, actually. One of the keys... One of the things, keys or whatever you want to call it, to the Pistons' success tonight is going to be their spacing. If they don't do a good job with that. The Knicks are too good defensively, and they're going to create a lot of problems for themselves. Extra pass made by Oakley to the X-Man, Xavier McDaniel, and he sticks it. And the Knicks lead 4-2. The Ewing has double teamed so much. The Knicks do a real good job of sending that dive man in early, and Woolridge is going to have to cut that guy off to take that pass away. Joe D with a rainbow and it goes. Knicks will look to push it back at you from time to time. 
Patrick with a turn and gun doesn't get it. John Sally is hit for the foul by Bob Delaney. Patrick Ewing coming into tonight has taken the most field goal attempts and the most free throws for the Knicks. Only shooting at 72, 727 from the free throw line. One of the areas where the Knicks could get better. Uh, as a team, they only shoot 732, which puts them in the lower half uh, of the NBA team-wise from the foul line. On cue, Patrick missed the first. Nails the next. New York by one. Did Patrick listen to me on that one? What, you well, what we do you were, think, George? We're awfully close, Ryan. <laughs> so, uh, courtside at Madison Square Garden. We've got the Pistons turning it over. <laughs> Isaiah will get the offensive foul. Oakley coming out, jumping out on that pick and roll. And according to Jackie Neese, was there in time to draw the offensive foul. Patrick, jump hooking, hitting. It's going to be a long night for John Sally if he's going to let him catch the ball that deep because there's absolutely no way you can A, stop him, B, the trap can't get there in time. Ball's too deep. Next by three, seven to four. Dennis Rodman with all kinds of room. Orlando against McDaniel. Over him. He hits it. That was a Pistons are within one. Eight now and 56. Left in the first. McDaniel wants to post the O. The up fake. Orlando bothered that one. Worm with a rebound. Orlando a little bit bigger than the X-Man and can get up and really challenge that jumper. He set him up again and McDaniel got him on the shot. <laughs> Now, if you look at the Nick roster and you watch them play over the course of the year, number 32, Xavier McDaniel, as far as I'm concerned, is their X factor. When that guy scores and he's a contributor to the offense, he's playing well. Then they have a certified scorer at that small forward position, which is something that you really need in the NBA. And uh, he's really struggled on the road. He has not given them exactly the things that they hope, but he has been enough of a presence in many games to help them to where they are tonight. Well, when you get as much scoring as they do in the middle, he is scoring enough at that small forward spot. Orlando ties it and then unties it. They like that long outlet pass, either on a rebound or after a score, they'll look to try and throw that first pass out to midcourt. Great play, the passing lane by Woolridge. Cracks it down. Isaiah off the high glass. It rims away to McDaniel. Tough to lose that hoop. New York with the break that Jackson converts. Knicks nine and the Pistons eight. Eight and ten now left in the first. Joe D on top against Gerald Wilkins. And a baseline grab called on Mark Jackson. Jackson complaining that Zeke grabbed his wrist and was holding him. Pat Riley perhaps agreed with Jackson. Behind the back dishing is Dumars to Woolridge. Orlando misses the turning gun. Sally sticks back to the left and jump hook and he hits it. Good job by John. Wilkins from the corner. Knicks are really pushing the ball after a score, coming out early and attacking the Pistons. Oakley knocks it down. Charles Oakley takes good shots within his range, 18 feet, standstill jumper. He can make that shot. Knicks by one, 11 to 10, seven and a half left in the first. Joe at the foul line extension, works Wilkins to the paint, and you hear the whistle. Wilkins, there was a little extra curricular bump from Oakley on Joe in the lane. 
No. I don't know if Oakley knew exactly how to take it. And I know Orlando Woolridge thought perhaps he needed to step in and do a little something about it. Pistons, meantime, break. Rodman loose for the baseline move. And it's 12 11. Our game brought to you in part by Amico Silver Gasoline. Bring back the acceleration, bring back the power. Gerald Wilkins threw it away behind Ewing. Pistons in trap caused that turnover. Nick's doing an awfully good job of getting the ball to the middle against traps and pressure. Turnovers are 2 2. Pistons 12, New York 11 at the Garden. Orlando foul line off the double pump. No. Isaiah steals it from Oakley. He and Orlando lose it out of bounds. Well, the Pistons started a little slowly, but they're into it now. Timeout, 6 and 48 left in the first. They lead the Knicks in New York, 12 11. This is the Pistons Television Network. For complete series ticket information. Six and 40 left here, first quarter. Pistons up on the Knicks in New York, 12-11. Patrick Ewing tried to spin low on Sally, and he's bumped and fouled. That is the second on Spider. They got a loose ball situation. Ball pops out of Oakley's hand, and then Isaiah, he doesn't even realize that Oakley's right there. They run it run into each other right before the timeout Bill Lambeer now checks in for John Sally to another warm greeting on the road if he didn't hear that uh, he'd be upset he's ready now he came off ready against the heat on Sunday night man Wilkins misses Oakley chases it down an offensive rebound for New York Ewing against Billy to the baseline. Patrick, he hits it. Patrick loves to turn to the baseline from that low left box. He, he constantly likes to turn to his right shoulder. And when he turns to the baseline, it's awful hard to get a double team there. 13 12, New York, halfway through the first. Joe over Gerald Wilkins. Knocks it down. Good defense by Wilkins. Made Joe make a very tough shot. Make it, he did. Nothing but sweet string music. A lob to Ewing. It's too deep. And did he step out? Well, he shuffled his feet anyway. The cha cha called by Jack Neese. Cha cha, huh? Have you seen the Mambo Kings? Oh, I understand they're big in Miami. <laughs> very big. <laughs> Five and a half left in the first. From New York, it's the Pistons and the Knicks. Turning, gunning as Orlando, and it goes. Oh, he's got a little extra hop in his lift tonight. He's really getting up off the floor. Pistons by three, 16-13. Xavier McDaniel outside to Jackson. Jackson hasn't had a whole lot of touches yet. Ewing knocks it down from the foul line extension. Patrick's really got a nice touch. And he can shoot 15 to 17 feet facing the basket. You've got to go out. And you've got to play him. Four and 50 left in the first. Pistons by one in New York. Isaiah with 10 on the clock gives it up to Joe between the rings. Orlando against Ewing. Drives it, reverses. Kiss the glass and hit it. Oh, using his head there. Realized he had Patrick away from the basket. You want to make big people move their feet when you get them away from the basket like that. Orlando with eight. Xavier McDaniel gets it on the other end. And it's 18-17 Pistons. Four and 20 left in the first. Woolridge shoved by McDaniel inside. Trying to find a way to cool him off, and he fouled him. In Oakley and McDaniel, the Knicks have two forwards that will try and bow guard you. They'll try and be physical. They'll try and intimidate. And if the refs will let him get away with it early, it could be a long night. We got a T coming, yep. George. Technical foul on McDaniel now. Patrick Ewing is trying to calm him down. 
They walk out of your picture now, but there you'll see him again. Good job by Harry Hutt. Reviewing the team leader. Has to make sure Xavier sticks around, you know. You can get two in a row and take a shower. And you can get him real quick. Like that. Better get him out and they will. You want to see an enforcer. Here comes Anthony Mason for McDaniel. They got bigger with that exchange. Joe missed the tech. Still the Pistons by one. Many people think they get better when he comes to the game. Worm lost it in the lane. Gerald Wilkins digs it out. The Knicks are on the run, but the Pistons get back. Oakley from the corner. He hits it. New York by one. Green and roll. Joe and Billy. Patrick Ewing comes to try and knock it away. Bumps him and fouls him. But they may get whistled for an illegal defense first. And they do. Oakley was illegal. We got bell ringers this year. Three point shots mean $50 from Bell Tire and Kelly Springfield, the St. John Hospital and Medical Center's infant car seat program. So far, 84 of them, meaning a donation of $4,200. Bill Lambeer fouled by Oakley. Right out there in front of everybody. And the Knicks are in the penalty. Pistons have just two team fouls. We have three and 37 to play in the first. On a switch, Oakley picks up Bill, goes to jam him, because he knows Bill is a good shooter. Clearly fouls him on the arm. Lamb at the line, gets the Bronx cheer, and buries the first. Billy, along with Joe Dumars, leading the Pistons in free throw shooting. Billy up at 89 now, 891, has surpassed you. He surpassed Joe Dumars. Really been playing well coming off the bench. Even, uh, you know, through the, the losses, he's the one guy I think we can turn to and say he's been playing some of his best basketball this year. Hit them both. One, two, two, half court trap. Way outside to Mark Jackson. Oakland gets the open shot and misses to Worm. Pistons uh, making the Knicks go perimeter, which is what they were hoping to do with that trap. Orlando's had the hot hand, still does. Two more for Orlando, he has 10 in the first nine minutes. Pistons by three, 22-19. The trap again, they're gonna to wanna to get one trap out of the corner, then they'll match up. And the shot clock's at 12 now with the Knicks first starting their offense. Mark Jackson over Isaiah, off the iron. Saved by Oakley, but Orlando's got it. 250 left in the first. Pistons by three and with it. Orlando by himself. He hits it one more time. A dozen for Orlando already. Knicks had a uh, guy down. The Pistons had a five on four advantage and moved the ball smartly. Mark Jackson sees an opening. Dishes to Patrick, and he buries it. Interestingly enough, with the trap, the Knicks have Ewing on the baseline towards the corner, out of that low post position, and you accomplish what you want, but Patrick could still knock out that jumper. Dennis Rodman blind dishing to Bill Lambeer. He buries it. Real nice job by Dennis. Strong kick. Excellent piston start. A double team and a steal. Woolridge to Joe. Four against Jackson. Orlando will finish. He has 14. And New York wants timeout. They'll take a 20. One and 37 left in the first half. Will be followed by a piston full. 
It's 28-21 Pistons at the Garden on the Pistons Television Network. Want to see a double team? And a steal. Billy Lambeer's active hands, knocking it away. Simple pass, strong finish. This trap the Pistons is bringing on the Knicks. They're definitely taking it out of any offensive flow to create a seven-point margin. Our statistician, Bob Rosen, has the Pistons on a 10-2 tear right now. They've made nine of their last 10 from the floor and seven shots in a row, but they are whistled for an illegal defense. Knicks have been complaining about an illegal defense, and uh, they got the call, although I don't really think it was a good one. They called it on Isaiah, and he was matched up with Anthony, Anthony Mason. But the call was made. Play on. Kiki Vandaway for Oakley for New York. Knicks looking for a little offense. Mason down low. Powers it up and down over Worm, and he gets the foul. Even for Worm, that's too deep. You can't let a guy as strong as Mason catch the ball that deep. You really can't let anybody in the NBA catch the ball that deep and get it down inside the dotted line, six feet from the basket, you're gonna have a problem. Zeke is doing a real good job playing Mark Jackson, keeping the penetration to a minimum, and what we call up and back, making it tough for Mark to enter the ball to Ewan. He's made Mark Jackson invisible so far. Three-point trip, though, for Mason and a Piston turnover. Their fourth. Knicks are trapping that pick-and-roll action very aggressively and then rotating to the roll man. Pistons by four now, 28-24. Last minute, first quarter. Bammed away. Nothing but that. Kiki gives him some instant heat. Kiki's a very dangerous guy. Can light it up real quickly. Can score in punches in a hurry. Great up fake. Joe D drills it. Starks is checked in. And is he ever dangerous? This kid's on some roll, Judge. John Starks. Watch him from behind the three-point line. And a near record eight the other night against the Bulls, but this time Joe D gets in front, takes the charge, and the offensive foul on Starks takes it away. Four for eight against Cleveland the other night. Joe doing a real good job. Squared him up. Starks went right through his chest. Pistons 30. Knicks 26. Inside, 10 seconds to play in the first. Joe, two seconds to go. For three, and it's through. A triple from Joe, and it's 33-26. Pistons after one in New York. This is the Pistons Television Network. Ray Lane recaps all the week's sports action Sunday night at 10.30 on Sports Extra on Fox 50. A little action to finish the first. How about Joe Dumars? The Knicks were caught in a rotation. John Starks left Joe alone. He went to help. Couldn't find anybody. And he realized, uh-oh, I left the wrong man. Too late. As they say on the playground, they also say, game. I got game. Look at the field goal percentage. You might mistake that for a free throw percentage. This is unbelievable considering what the two teams uh, field goal percentage against coming into tonight's game is. Well, the Pistons have made their last nine shots. And we know that for sure. The Elias Sports Bureau, Bob Rosen, keeping track. He never makes a mistake. That's 10. Make it 10. Bill Lambeer makes it a nine point Piston lead. And away Mason Ewing, Starks, and Jackson. Ewing taps it back to Mark Jackson. Dotted line, push on the run. He got it. a little help from his friend, the rim. We'll push it and shove him. Mark Aguirre and Anthony Mason. Let's keep an eye on that. Here we go. 
Good thing to keep your eye on. Mason with the foul mark with Dennis Rodman, Bill Lambeer, Isaiah, and Joe for the Pistons. Watch Mark. He knew it got, he knew he was going to get retaliated right in front of Bob Delaney. Anthony Mason's got to be a little bit smarter than that. Mark's been around for a while. A double double team. Mason. And we're going to get double text now on Mark and Anthony Mason from Jess Kersey to try and uh, quiet that down right now. Well, we got to clean it up. One more tee and they're gone. NBA, you don't shoot double tees. Greg Anthony checks in in the backcourt for New York, joining Starks, replacing Jackson. The handoff and an offensive foul called on Joe. A good call by Jack Dees. Joe knew it. Joe spun and turned into the path of Greg Anthony as he tried to follow Zeke. That piston lead is seven. Well, Anthony's had a real struggle with his shot here in his rookie year. They work it around outside. We're going to get a foul inside. It's on Patrick Ewing. Pat Riley can't be too happy. What's happening is the Knicks are getting baited into taking fouls. Uh, Pistons being a little physical and the Knicks retaliating. And usually the team that retaliates is the one, they're the ones that get caught. Well, Dumars took a pretty good poke in the chin on that one. Darrell Walker for Isaiah, lobs to Aguirre. Working against his pal Mason. Anthony comes in to squeeze the trap. Mark turns, forces, misses. Worm with a great tap to Darrell Walker. He couldn't drill it. Mason with a rebound. Patrick Ewing from the mid post. Mark Aguirre pulls it down. Played two in the second, 35-28. The Pistons lead the Knicks in New York. Bill Lambeer against Vandeweghe. Triples the up fake. Now the high glasser. Got it. It rattled, but it went. I tell you what, I really thought he was going to get fouled. He wanted the foul, didn't get it. He'll take the best. Pistons 37, New York 28. Anthony looking for Starks. Finds him on the wing against Joe. Mason posting Rodman, gets it mid-left. From the dotted line, off the heel to Billy. Worm holding his ground that time, forcing Mason into a fadeaway. Nope, 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 nope. Joe comes to get it from the foul line extension. He sends it and scores it. Knicks take time. Pistons 39 and New York 28. Timeout here, 9.05 till halftime on the Pistons Television Network. Take, take a look at Joe Dumars following hard, forcing uh, Stark's way out, and then Worm forcing Mason to catch it, and then a little further out, and then holding his ground, making him to, uh, force up a, t a fadeaway. Then at the offensive end, watch the ball movement. Good screen by Mark Aguirre, freeing up Dumars. Knicks are on the attack after their timeout. Oakley's back, gets to Vandaway. Kiki Vandaway's shot rims away to Mason. Anthony Mason down low and it goes it. Mason gets the glasser, it's 39-30. The piston lead is nine. Eight and 39 till halftime. Walker against Starks. Darrell to Billy by himself from the corner. Off the iron. Dennis Rodman with the rebound, but he'll be hit with a loose ball foul. And a technical foul. He bounced the ball in the direction of Jack Neese and hit him in the hip. Warren will sit down. Chuck Daly will try and cool him off. John Sally replaces him. Dicky Vandaway will shoot the tech. Missed it. 
Worm has got to do a better job at controlling his emotion. That is inexcusable and uncalled for. So what's your point? My point is, no, I'm mad at him, and I love him. But he's got to do a better job. Jack and East wanted to throw him. Yes. Okay? But cooler heads prevail. Darrell Walker and Bob Delaney, and Jack backed off. Pistons warned for delay a game. Right now, they lead in the game 39-30, and they need to keep their cool here at Madison Square Garden. They're only shooting 74%. Nick's paling in comparison down at 57%. Anthony is about a 38% shooter. And now, since he's come on with a rush, gets that one topside. Has struggled with his shot this year, although the Knicks are very high on this year. I think he's got a real bright future. Joe D standing on that three-point line, knocks it down. Starts coast to coast. And an offensive foul on Starks will take it away. He was out of control. Piston's doing a nice job in transition defense. Knicks are really coming back at him hard after scores. And he has nice help. People stepping in, Lamp giving his body up again. Mark McGuire filling in on the weak side. See how fast he ran? Oh, real quick. Can we see it again? Anthony's hit with a foul. We have 7 and 35 left in the half. Looks to come out tonight. It's been a little chippy. I'm a little surprised. Darrell Walker driving and knocks no, Oakley right. down. He'll get the uh, offensive foul. Darrell left the ground. And before he left the ground, he knew Oakley was there. And I think he was saying, why did I do that? Yeah, he knew it. Besides, why do you want to run it to Oakley? Exactly. Darrell's tough, but. The Detroit Fire Bowl is on the second half. Darryl gets the foul on the other end in a hurry. Number 11, Isaiah Thomas is back on the floor. Isaiah replaces him. Pistons 41, Knicks 32, 7 and 22 left in the half. Greg Anthony to the baseline. Sally swats it out of bounds. Nice job by John coming over. He was there all the way. Actually, Greg Anthony made it easy for him. Shot selection. Pistons made that pass very difficult. Now they've got Stark squeezed in a trap in the corner. Good trap, too. Shot clock 10 when they finally make a pass. Anthony misses. Van Beer taps it to Joe. Good job by Billy. Mark McGuire from downtown doesn't get it. Anthony Mason gets his pocket pick. Spider with a slam. And Nick's had a man ahead of the field. If Mason had looked up and thrown it, and an easy, easy deuce. Pistons lead him by 11. It's 43 32 at Madison Square Garden. Six and a half left in the half. Starts in the foul line extension. Mark McGuire with the rebound, but the Pistons will be whistled for a loose ball foul. Anthony Mason is a road game around the basket. He holds his ground very, very well. And I think Mark McGuire got called for the foul. He's trying to push Mason under the rim so he couldn't rebound the ball. Earl Wilkins, Xavier McDaniel, Patrick Ewing, all check in for the Knicks. With Anthony and Mason. Patrick short with that shot. Pistons trapping from side out of bounds again, making the Knicks perimeter. Bill Lambeer from the wing. Wilkins with the rebound. Anthony, triple team, Sally swats the shot out of bounds. John, real active at the defensive end. 
you know, a shot blocker will become more aggressive when he knows that they're not going to make him pay by finding his man. And if guys keep trying to challenge him, they just make it easier for him. Inbound lob, Mark Jackson got it too deep and he drilled it. Mark's a good low post player, especially for point guard. He's got a nice little jump hook down in there. Strodman back for John Sally. Isaiah sets up Joe. Doesn't take the triple. Works it high post to Aguirre against McDaniel. Dotted line push. Rolls away. Billy Lambert, though, sticks it back and scores it. Using that great vertical. Pistons by 11 again. The two-inch vertical. What position? Tiptoe tap. Jackson swings it to Mason. Good ball moved by the Knicks now. Mason from the dotted line throws it. Anthony Mason, 6'7", all of 250. Five minutes till halftime. Mark McGuire gets it back. Blind dishes it. Jackson's the only one there. And besides, Mark Randall and Patrick Hewitt. An offensive foul. Mark tried it. Put a little mustard on when that baby, if he had given it up right away, he might have had an easy pass. There's the steal. Runs it down. Good hustle. Uh, he saw Mark Jackson coming back. Good hustle play by Mark Jackson, getting back into the passing lane. Distance by nine. The Knicks to Ewing. Isaiah Traps. Jackson on top. <laughs> Mark Jackson's a key for this ball play. They need him to play well. They need his distribution of the basketball. Four and a half left in the half. Pistons 45 in the next 38. Joe from the corner with the rainbow. Doesn't go. Rodman touched it back to the captain. Joe again for three. Won't go through. Warren with another rebound. Outside it goes to Bill Lambeer. To the top side pop. This one won't drop. And Mason finally rebounds for New York. Can't say we didn't have our chances there. Traps Ewing with Lambeer. Xavier McDaniel from the corner cuts it to five. It was an awfully tough shot because Rodman really flew at him. Timeout Piston, 3 and 49 left in the half. They lead him 45 40 at the Garden in New York and the Pistons television network. Second phase of the Valvoline Michigan Bowling Challenge Saturday at 1 on Fox 50. The team from Woodland, Oxford, Tampa, and Country Lanes compete. The chance to go to the semifinals. You can play along at home for a chance to win great prizes and a postcard to Michigan Bowling Challenge. Box 5130 Southfield, 48086. Friday night with Charlottesville will be Isaiah Thomas jersey for the first 4,000, 16 and under. The Rochester Knee and Sports Therapy. Conversation coming up at halftime with Dave Gavin. Bill Lambeer. Hits it from the wing. And the Pistons, who have made only one of their last seven before the timeout, get a make after the break. Three and a half left in the half. 47 40, they lead the Knicks in New York. McDaniel off the iron. Mason chases it down. The last three Piston turnovers have been because of offensive fouls. Jackson has it slapped and stolen by the captain, the work. In transition, the Knicks run back. They covered that well. Joe rocks the dribble against Gerald Wilkins, takes it baseline. Through the lane dish to Woolridge from the corner, it'll be short to Wilkins. Good spot up by Woolridge so that Joe could find him. 250 till halftime. Patrick from the baseline nails it. And the Piston lead is five. 47 42. You don't want to let people come off the dribble to the middle of the floor because then you can draw help and that opens up the perimeter jump shot. Well, 
played by McDaniel. Woolrich against Mason. Bill Lambeer against Patrick Ewing. Joe slides to the lane on Wilkins, dishes back to Billy from the way. Over Patrick, and he nailed it. Joe Ewing running right at him. Yeah, well, Joe's penetration drew Ewing a step or two, enough to open Billy up. Bill Lambeer has 14 piston points. Ewing's miss. Orlando will be hit for the charge. Four turnovers. The last five turnovers, I'm sorry, the last four turnovers have been because of offensive fouls. Orlando thought he might be able to step by, but Wilkins was definitely there. Did a good job. That was an easy call. Trap again. One, two, two. And now they'll trap it really in the corner. Now they got a matchup. Darrell Wilkins with some screen music for the Knicks. One of the streakiest shooters in the NBA. But when he's got it going, he can be devastating. Minute and a half left in the half. Ewing slaps it away from Isaiah and fouls him. We have a Budweiser winner in that Budweiser Pistons Dream Sweepstakes. Brenda Beach has until the end of halftime to call 313 377 8680 to win in the great Pistons Budweiser Dream Sweepstakes contest. Isaiah to the rim, scooping and scoring and a foul. Oh, the captain turned him loose there. Zeke just did a great job coming off that pick and roll. With a change of pace, the dribble. Watch it now, as he comes off with the left hand. Pulls it back a little, then he goes, watch the contact, takes the hit and finishes. Typically Isaiah. Took a blast from Mason also. Just anybody hit him. <laughs> that guy's chiseled, isn't he? Oh, man. He's got my old body, George. Like a three-point trip. Maybe my new one after a few more trips to Big Ten. McDaniel, the X-Man, hits it. So he can make some tough shots, and he has so far tonight. I think they're doing a good job, and they're defending him well. But he's capable of making tough shots. Pistons by six, a minute left in the half. And as good as we thought it could be. The Pistons and Knicks in New York. Isaiah to the rim off the high glass and he hit it. What a great give and go. He always playing basketball. Zeke and Worm ran it to perfection. Pistons lead him by eight. Boy, how good would a stop and a score look now. Ewing fighting for position against Bill Lambeer, having trouble too. Jackson dropped it. Isaiah quick as a cat to the ball. Pistons doing a great job of coming from the top and really squeezing the trap on Ewing. He's having trouble getting his shot off. They forced 10 Nick turnovers. 20 seconds left in the half. Orlando sees the open man. Rodman comes and completes it on a reverse off the window. And did he look? I don't think so. I'll tell you what, the timing on that play was outstanding. The cut was perfect, and O found him with a really good pass. Less than 10 to play in the half. Now five. Inside to Gerald Wilkins. He hits the reverse. Do they have time for a shot. Nope, the Pistons lead by eight at the intermission at Madison Square Garden. It's 56-48 Pistons on the Pistons Television Network. There are some people who don't like pressure in their lives. Dave Gavitt, our guest here, is not one of them. The uh, senior executive vice president of the Boston Celtics, meaning he runs basketball, for this uh, tradition-rich NBA franchise and the president of USA Basketball. Uh, those are two man-sized jobs, Dave. Well, it all kind of adds up to a lot of basketball. In one year, this being the Olympic year, uh, it seems like each game we play, we get a little bit closer to that pressure, George. Dave, um, this is the first time that, uh, that the pros have played in the Olympics. Tell us about the, the thought process and so forth that went into making uh, an historic decision, really. Well, the decision was really made by FIBA, the international governing body for the sport of basketball under the Olympic uh, Games and all other competitions, uh, 176 countries. They had a special congress in April of 89 and voted uh, to end all eligibility rules. And it was open eligibility for every country. What they really did was to vote to end a hypocrisy against the United States. 
because it was really only our professionals that were never able to play. The guys in the Italian League and the Spanish League that sure. were making 800000 a year were playing for their countries. And then it was really up to us to implement it. And uh, so as president of USA Basketball, I, I guess I convinced David Stern that the NBA needed to become a member along with the NCAA and the other traditional constituent members. And from there, we put together a plan uh, to, uh, to make, uh, make it as easy as we could for the top players to play. And I think we did a good job, George. I think that when we started, uh, particularly the media said, you know, hey, even though they're eligible, you'll never get the, you know, the cream of the crop to play. The NBA season's too long. And we not only have gotten the cream of the crop, we've gotten every one of them to say yes. And uh, so we feel very good about where we are. But now we need to go tee it up and win some games. You know, we feel very good about the man you picked to uh, to coach the Olympic team in Detroit. We're very, very proud that uh, Chuck Daly was chosen. How did you pick Chuck and his two fine assistants? Well, we put together a committee of 12 uh, chaired by C.M. Newton, uh, Olympic assistant in 84, the athletic director at Vanderbilt. There are eight NBA representatives on it and four collegiate representatives. So the NBA people obviously know the pro players and the collegiate people know the international game a little better having uh, had deeper experience. And it was that group of 12 that selected Chuck as the coach. And as president, I sit in on those meetings uh, without voice or vote. And I can tell you that it was done uh, very honestly, very energetically, and that there was some real competition. But I think uh, with Chuck, we have uh, the very best we could get. And I'm uh, equally as pleased with his coaching staff. Lenny Wilkins and Mike Krzyzewski uh, assisting Chuck in, in this effort. Uh, when, they, uh, when they do tee it up in Barcelona, who are going to be the uh, biggest hurdles to bringing home the gold? I think before we even get to the actual teams, uh, uh, I really believe that the game, the international rules, and the difference in those rules are an opponent of ours as well, particularly the fact that the game is only 40 minutes long and it doesn't have clock stoppage. It's very difficult to get subs in and out. The lane is trapezoidal. It's a little different. Um, the international players are so much, the, the three-point line is shorter. They're, they're so much more uh, used to playing it would be like in golf, we use that analogy, if we went over to the British Open, no matter how good we were, if we had to play with a small British ball, it might throw us off a little bit. Uh, so I think that's, a, that's you know, an adjustment for us. Uh, I think our biggest competition is going to come from Croatia. Uh, it'll be the foundation of the Yugoslav team that has really been dominant for a number of years now. Uh, and people like Drazen Petrovic and Tony Kukoc and Stojko Vrankovic off our club, uh, they've got a guard named Komajic who's very good at 6'7", and Dino Raja at 6'10". So they're starting five, uh, two are in the NBA, and the other three probably are good enough to be here. And then I think Lithuania with Sharunas, Marshalinas, and Sabonis, uh, the big 7'3 center, and two excellent shooters in Komichius and Kurtnitis are very veteran international players. So I think those two are going to be our biggest competition. And if we play Spain, it will be not easy because Spain, uh, we beat in the gold medal game in Los Angeles in 84, uh, and they probably more closely approximate our country's defensive abilities and quickness, and they'll have the home court going for them. Dave, a final question for you. Um, you're going to add uh, a few more players to the team. Uh, everybody in Detroit, of course, would like to see Isaiah make it. Uh, I know he was on your 1980 Olympic team that didn't get to play. Uh, when are you going to make that decision, and, uh, and uh, what chance does he have? Well, I'll take it in reverse order. I would think his chances are, are very good. I mean, I don't know, but I've, I've heard Isaiah's name along with Drexler and Dumars, uh, probably uh, those three that have been most prominently mentioned by committee members to me. Uh, we have two players to add. One must be a collegian at minimum. Both could be, but I suspect only one will be. And that committee will meet sometime probably after the first round of the playoffs. A date has not been set yet and, uh, and make the final selection. And I would think that... Uh, Isaiah's chances uh, of being a part of that are as good as anyone else's, probably. All right, Dave, thanks so much for your, uh, for your time today, and good luck this summer. Thank you, sir. Dave Gavitt, and uh, if you don't like pressure, you wouldn't like the two jobs he has. That's Fast Break, brought to you by Dunham's, the complete sports outfitter. Our score in New York, the Pistons 56, and the next 48 on the Pistons television network. Three Pistons and doubles, Orlando and Billy each with 14, Joe D with 13. The captain has scored seven. The Pistons, as a team, shot 25 for 38. 658 to be exact. Next, we're not shabby, 23 for 40, 58%. 
Knicks with 10 turnovers, the Pistons with nine. And this is the two teams that are three and five in the league, ranked three and five in field goal percentage against. Figure that one out. They're lighting each other up. Bill Lambeer with a strong first half continues here as we start the second half. Billy's starting because John Sally has three. Little change there. And because he was six for nine in the first half, maybe now he's seven for ten. Patrick Ewing led the Knicks in the first half with 11. The X-Man and Mark Jackson each with eight. Rotation a step late. And Oakley able to get inside the rotation for an easy basket. Orlando screens for Isaiah. The triple try won't go down. Good job by Worm. Jamming the rebounder, making it hard for Oakley to see that long outlet pass. We've played a minute here in the third. Pistons 58, Knicks 50. Oakley inside again. Got it to go again. We'll pick our defensive player of the game tonight. Brought to you by Health Alliance Plan. Health Alliance Plan, your health deserves the best. This is need to tighten up the D here. In the third. The lead is six. The shot clock is at seven. Isaiah drives Jackson. Scoop won't fall, but Oakley lost the rebound out of bounds. Courtesy of Bill Lambeer. Knicks are being very physical uh, here early in the second half and playing the pick and roll. What they're doing is what we call body and under. They're trying to distort the screen and make the screen out a little bit higher than you want it. Captain working between the rings and a foul away from the ball. Don Charles Oakley says Jess Kersey. Say hello to a Piston fan who watches every game on television down in Bucyrus, Ohio. Kelly Noggle, or is it Noggle? Dennis Rodman lays it up and in. Great ball move. Pistons it back into trap, and this has really been effective tonight. It has really bothered the Knicks. Charles Oakley with a show and go. Drew the contact, and he got the foul on Dennis Rodman. Greg Leshman, Ross Patrick, Matt Karillak, and Andy Heyman all here from Bloomfield Hills to watch the Pistons play tonight. And uh, Birmingham born and raised Mike Mucklip. With Sports Illustrated also here in the crowd. Bill Lambeer's whistle for a foul. Piston fans don't like that. Two fouls in a heartbeat. Nine and 49 to play in the third. A lot to Ewing. Jackson gets it back, throws it up and in. You know what they call that little running one-hander? It's a teardrop. <laughs> That's a teardrop. He's very good at it. It'll bring tears to your eyes if you're on the other squad. Lambeer set the screen, moved Oakley a foot and a half. Joe didn't drill it. Orlando gets it back. Joe in the corner. Mid post to Warren. Wheeling. Double clutching. No. He hits it on a stick back after Billy Lambeer had missed a tap. Piston's doing a great job on the boards tonight. After being out rebounded badly in the first two contests against this team this year. McDaniel from the baseline buries it. Last three games, the X-Man has come alive. Seems to have found his stroke again, averaging 14 a game. But found himself by himself there. Dumars dishes back to Billy after the high screen. Shot is off the heel. Gerald Wilkins to Mark Jackson. Pistons by six. Jackson from the top. It won't drop. Worm with a rebound. Go took it to the glass, too hard. New York in transition. McDaniel misses. Mark Jackson. Now Oakley. And Oakley finally finishes. Pistons are going to take a 20-second timeout here. 
We've got another Budweiser winner. Pistons called the 22nd timeout. Chuck Daly with the Brendans. Has a 62-58 lead. Maybe the Budweiser winner, Ed Lamina, will get to go to Chicago as part of his fantasy as the Pistons and Budweiser work their dream sweepstakes for. Pistons get back to work. Their lead's been cut to four. The Knicks have definitely picked up their defensive intensity. They're picking the Pistons up further out on the floor, applying more pressure, making the Pistons start their offense from out higher. Orlando tried to get it off the dribble and didn't. Ewing, two-timed and missed it to Warren. When he gets the ball on that side of the floor, he's able to get his shot off quicker because the double team has further to go. Bill Lambeer, topside gunning. Got it! There's a huge hoop, folks. The Pistons lead him by six now. It's always nice to break that run. Quiets this New York crowd a little bit. Mark Jackson with another teardrop <laughs> off the glass and good. <laughs> the lead is four. What's more? Six and 50 left in the third. Pistons 64, New York 60 at Madison Square Garden. Mark Jackson with a near steal. The captain gets it back. Went to the baseline, lost it out of bounds. Man, did Jackson get physical. On that knock away, we'll get time out here. Six and 41 left in the third. Pistons 64, Nick 60 on the Pistons Television Network. The Knicks have come out, and they're just not letting the Pistons run their offense right now. The lead has been cut to four. Patrick Ewing let Bill Lambeer have it. With a nasty elbow. Let's see how it happened. Billy doing a real good job. And Bam. there it is. Patrick has a tendency to use his arms to try and clear space. And that time he got Billy right in the mouth. You don't think that was an intentional elbow? I think maybe it was. I don't think it's intentional, okay? I th what happens a lot of times is a guy will try and have his hand over the top of Ewing's shoulder. So he comes up to clear space, okay? That time, Billy's hand was not on top. Go ahead, finish what you're gonna say, Ronnie. Well, we got uh, good offensive action here on the offensive glass right now. You've got Billy working and then Rodman following up. Five and 50 left in the third, 64-60. The Pistons lead the Knicks in New York. Gerald Wilkins caught in the crowd, got it back somehow. Worm keeps it alive, but McDaniel's got it. Jackson on the drive and dish to Patrick Ewing. Alone on the baseline, the shot short. Bill Lambeer taps it to Worm, but we're going to get a loose ball foul on the Pistons. Jack Neese has called it. It's on Orlando Woolridge for a shove. You know, we didn't mention this early on. We talked about the discrepancy in rebounding numbers in the two games head-to-head, -head, but the Knicks are the best rebounding team in the NBA percentage-wise at 529. The Pistons are eighth at 518. And the Knicks are the best defensive rebounding team. The good defensive play there by Dennis Rodman with a step in front steal in the lane. Passing lane, that is. Worm over Ewing. He hit it. Nothing but net, nothing to it, says Dennis. Looks like a big time scorer. Caught the ball, Ewing backed up. Dennis squared up. He was in his range. He caught the ball in his range so he could stand and shoot it. 66 60. Pistons with the lead. Wilkins lost the dribble. Jackson picks it up. Shot clock seven to Ewing. Lambeer with a great slap away, and now the shot clock is at four. Billy wanted it off Ewing's. Foot. Couldn't get it. Got to watch the lob here now from out of bounds. Pat Riley with a play call. 
They lose it again. Shot clock one. And the shot clock finally ran out. Wilkins didn't catch anything with that prayer. In the last two minutes, the Pistons have upped their defensive intensity to match the Knicks. And now we're taking the Knicks out of their offense. And what's happening, two of the better defensive teams in the NBA are really getting after each other right now, making it very difficult for each team to run their half-court offense. This Irish been doing some coaching tonight. Riley and Daly from Midtown Manhattan. Isaiah slipped by Jackson, but Ewing blocks. Isaiah flat on his back, out of bounds. Knicks have five against four, and the Pistons will be called for the block. Two tough calls just went against the Pistons. No question that Ewing got the ball, but I think he got body on Isaiah, and now a block call on Billy Lambeer. Great up fake off the dribble. Here comes Ewing. Sure looks like contact to me. We got Bill back on defense again, trying to break up this fast break and step in front of Wilkins. Well, he just slid over a little bit. That's a pretty good call. Wilkins got them both. You get the feeling this is going to the wire? Yeah, I, what's your point, George? <laughs> Pistons in the quarter, just five for 14. New York, six for 13. Orlando. Great body control there. Trapping the pick and roll. Pistons swinging the ball. They're able to get it to the open man before the Knicks can get back in their rotation. Orlando was 16. Bill Lambeer leads with 18. Ewing doubled. Clock at nine. They find McDaniel against Orlando. Ewing took the rebound from Billy. And Lamb will be hit with a hooking foul, trying to stop his shot. Billy knew it, too, because what happened was he let go of Ewing. He didn't maintain body contact, and he went to the rim, and the ball hit and bounced high enough so that Ewing could get back into it. Watch the weak side. Billy steps in, and watch the ball hang. If the ball had come off sooner, Ewing couldn't have gotten there. Patrick missed the first free throw, as John Sally will check in and give Bill Lambeer a rest. Again, when Ewing catches the basketball on the left side of the floor and turns to the baseline, it's harder for the trap man to get to him because he turns to the baseline. When he catches it on the other side of the floor, he has a tendency to turn back to the middle right into the trap man. And he really is struggling to get a shot off from that side of the floor. He split the pair. Pistons by five, 68-63, three and 23 left in the third. Isaiah with the drive and the scoop off the high glass and the score and a foul. Sensational. Zeke really having his way with Mark Jackson right now off the dribble. He went by him to the right. This time he goes by him to the left. Mark having a hard time keeping Zeke in front of him. Take a look. Body and under the pick and roll. He's got him squared, but he can't keep him in front of him, and Oakley is late. Isaiah makes a three-point trip for the captain. Pistons lead him by eight, 71-63. Guests on our broadcast get a gift certificate from Cousins, and Cousins big and tall. Long, tall John Sally checking Patrick Ewing in the post now. Pistons two-time. Jackson now has Dennis Rodman against him. Joe Dumar is trying to check McDaniel in the post. And the Pistons are hit with an illegal defense. That's their second. It's a team technical. Mark Jackson will shoot the technical foul free throw. Jackson leads the Knicks at 7-7-5. He's their leading free throw shooter. The illegal defense was on Joe Dumars. In the rotation, there's Joe coming back through the lane. And he doesn't go across the front of the rim from strong side to weak side with his man. He waits for McDaniel to come back, therefore the illegal defense. Jackson makes the tech. 
Seven point game. Pistons 71, Knicks 64. We have 250 left in the third. Behind the back bounce Jackson to Ewing, but Patrick is two time. Starks checks in. Air balls the triple, but Mark Jackson is there for the stick back score. We had two guys go to one man in a rotation, which left one nick open, and the ball bounced right to Mark Jackson. Warren passed up that shot. Two and a half left in the third. Isaiah against Starks. Off the high glass, he hit another one, hits the deck, through the foul. We'll get a timeout here. Two and 26 left in the third. Isaiah's hoop makes it 73-66 Pistons in New York. This is the Pistons Television Network. There's our friend Dick Carter, now the top assistant here for Pat Riley in New York. And there's his better half with the New York Nick Wives. Lady in the middle, Mary Harder. They want to say hello to their friends back in the Detroit area, especially Jake and Denise Malachy in Brighton. Isaiah made it another three-point trip. He has 13. 74-66, Pistons by eight. They played a complete game tonight, but we still have more than a quarter left. They've just been on the money so far. Pistons again coming out in the trap. And I think we've got another legal defense call. John Sally, I believe, was ruled illegal. And now Jess Kersey will explain to the Pistons why he made the call while we watch Mark Jackson make get the strike. Meantime, let's look back at Isaiah's great play. See, Zeke being as smart as he is, as soon as Starks comes up and tries to jam him, Zeke knows he's going to blow by him. So he takes him right away. He doesn't even mess around. The team technical free throw that Jackson drilled cuts it back to seven. Two left in the third. Patrick Hewitt, foul line, Gunning got it. Knicks have now gone to a smaller lineup with Jackson, Starks, and Gerald Wilkins, basically three guards. Careful, Isaiah. He finally gets it. Takes Jackson baseline. Leans. Guns got it. Oh, he's going to take that shot. There's a big time take and make it 76 69. First half, it was Dumars and Woolridge. Third quarter, Zeke is taking over. Out of bounds. Anthony Mason says Jack Nice. Jack says, give me the ball. Nice rotation down from the top by Isaiah to cover that weak side low box. Pistons really doing a good job double teaming Ewing. 14 Nick turnovers, Ronnie. This is with good ball movement. Shot clock seven. Sally whips it to Woolridge. The half hook. In and out. Tough luck on that one. Ewing with a rebound. Nice job by John Sally, bothering Jackson in transition. Gerald Wilkins, trying a little shake and bake with Orlando. Now the deep dish to Mason. Dennis Rodman hit for the foul. Orlando really doing a good job moving his feet and keeping the smaller Gerald Wilkins in front of him. Nick's trying to go to that matchup, think it's a mismatch. But Orlando's really doing a good job. Well, Mason beats Worm to the ball, catches it deep. That'll happen a lot. You catch the ball in the air and there is contact. You don't have to have a lot of contact. Quite often there will be a foul call. Bill Lambert checks in for Orlando. Joe Dumar's on the floor now. He gets Worm. The Pistons now sizing down to match up with the Knicks. Two misses for Anthony Mason. Final minute, third quarter. I'm sorry, this has been a lineup that's been very good to the Pistons. With Joe, Isaiah, and Darrell on the floor. And Billy, and either Worm or Sally. John, with a finger roll that won't fall. You know, John had him, he had Ewing faked out so badly on his first move. He should have finished the play right then and there. Got too cute. 
Shot clock 12, quarter clock 17. Ewing comes to screen, gets the bounce, Spider's there. To the hoop, missed the jam over Lamb. Plenty of time for Joe D. Isaiah with three seconds, now two against Starks. At the horn, no. At the end of three, it's the Pistons by seven in New York, 76-69. This is the Pistons Television Network. Laha with Ron Rostein here at Madison Square Garden in New York. Patrick Ewing missed a jam over Lamb and no whistle was blown. Nice job by Billy. Even if Patrick didn't think so. Patrick catches it deep. Sally blocks that slam and we're going to get a foul. It's on Spider. Oh, he challenged that dunk. He thinks it was an outstanding block. But you win some and you lose some. That's it. Two shots. Patrick misses again at the line. Boy, he's doing the Pistons some favors at the charity strike. Only 72% seven, from the line. Pistons have 18 off their bench from Bill Lambeer. He's outscored the Nick bench by himself. First minute, fourth quarter. The Pistons lead him, but by just six. Put it to the baseline. Gunning on the run. Doesn't get it. Walker snatches it down and is hammered. I think Dow got hit right in the eye. Great job coming in. And slide, slicing in there as he does. Makes himself big on the offensive glass. Darrell Walker will have to come out. Orlando deep missed the champ. Comes out to Joe. Again, start shot clock still running at 12, and the Knicks are illegal defensively. Mike Abdenau now taking a look at Darrell Walker's right eye. So when you get a finger right in your eye, where it really, not only is it painful, but you get disoriented. It's really hard to know where you, where you are and what's going on. You did the right be, thing getting him off the floor. It can also be extremely dangerous. That's what happened to Woolridge last year out in Denver with the Tatch Why well, he wears the, the goggles now. Isaiah looked, working a new shot clock to Sal. Spider with a clock at eight up, fakes Mason, the high glass are in and out, but he does draw the foul. It took John long enough to get the ball up over his head, but when he did, he made himself 6'11 and forced Mason to leave his feet. Now he'll get to shoot a pair. John two shots. Ten and 52 to go in the game. Pistons lead him by seven, 77-70 at Madison Square Garden in New York. Spider sticks the first. Gerald Wilkins in close 
Patrick Good ball to by the Knicks. Jackson by himself. Wilkins lost the rebound. Mark Jackson has it. Pistons aggressive both ways. Shot clock 15. Starks for three. It's a brick. This is one of the big stories of tonight's game, George, is the fact that John Starks right now is scoreless. And this kid has been just lighting it up coming off the bench for the Knicks. Trying to check Woolridge in the post right now. Orlando draws the foul. Starks was not going to give up a hoop yeah. under any circumstances. Had to foul him to stop it. Got his fourth foul. He's a very aggressive, hard-nosed kid. Played for four colleges in four years. No one knows where they are or who they were. Played in the CBA, got cut at Golden State. Found a home here when John McLeod brought him in last year. Well, he had finished a, at Oklahoma State. You know where that is. Yeah, uh, had a great summer league. Joe falling down. Tries to avoid a jump ball, but uh, he did. Yeah, John McLeod loved uh, John Starks and told me, hey, he's a Tiger, George, and he does play that way. The last six games, he's 21 for 40, for 525 from three point range. It was 8 for 15 in a recent loss to Chicago Bulls. That's one short of the NBA record for triples in a game. On the year, shooting at 360, 85 for 236 from three point range. Second leading scorer on the team, What's 26 you? minutes. 14 points again. Joe taps it to Spider Sally. By the way, the record of nine three pointers in a game shared by Dale Ellis and Michael Adams. Pick and roll. Isaiah whips it deep to Spider for the slam. Oh, that's big time piston basketball and a foul. Well, you said it. I'm going to just add a little something. Doesn't get any sweeter than that, George. How about that? Oh, they played well here in New York tonight off a great game Sunday night at the Palace against Miami. There's the rotation because they went to double team, and what happens is Sally steps into the rim. Wilkins is a step late picking him up. Here's the two. Picked up Lambeer. See, when Ewing goes out to pick up Lambeer, if Sally steps right in, the weak side guy has got to step in and get him, and all you have to be is one step late. The guy with the ball can find him. It's Dunk City. Spider from the stripe. Makes it a three-point trip. He has eight. Piston by 11. Nine and a half to go in the game. Starts to Vandaway, who's just come on. Kiki off the dribble to Jackson. With that throw up in the lane. Four on three. Sally the trailer at his pocket pick by Starks. Two on one against Lamb on Jackson converts. Joe trying to find Sally as the trailer coming down the lane, but Starks had him red all the way. Here comes Isaiah to work against Jackson. Turns to the baseline. Trapped in the corner. Look out. Mason and Jackson squeeze the trap. Joe behind the back, dishing to Orlando. Patrick Ewing trying to steal it. Nearly got it done, but he stepped out of bounds. I think I was a little quicker than you, George. Well, you were We both got out of the way. Great idea by Joe Dumars. Orlando a little bit surprised. Here comes Joe. Now they got him out number two on one inside. And always, if he handles the ball, it's, it's a dunk. Timeout, 8 and 45 left. Pistons lead by 9, 81 72 at the Garden in New York on the Pistons Television Network. Caribou. We got two seconds on the shot clock, George. Lambeer in the lane against Vandaway. Did Kiki tie him up? Yes. Well designed play. Good idea. Got the ball to the man they wanted. Vandaway made an outstanding play by slipping that hand in and tying Bill up. Now we've got two guys with, uh, I'd say, minimal verticals. Lamb tapped it, but Anthony was there. Greg Anthony was Starks in the backcourt. Vandaway, Ewing, and Anthony Mason up front for New York. 
Patrick Ewing against Bill Lambeer. Off the iron, Starks missed the tip jam. And the Pistons come the other way. 8.20 left, they lead by nine, 81-72. Lambeer with a high screen. Back to Billy, wide open. Ewing finally runs at him. Isaiah pulls it off, finger rolls off the glass. No, Sally's tap won't go. Out of bounds, and the Pistons will keep it. Pistons being able to take advantage of the mix on the glass. Three against two because of the trap of the pick and roll and the rotation up by Ewing. Sally from the baseline, bouncing to Warwick. Orlando drew the foul. Anthony Mason got him. Nice pass and baseline out of bounds and an outstanding screen by Joe Dumois. Orlando free Orlando up. Got that thing up there. Almost fell. Speaking of where did they come from, Anthony Mason, who played collegiately at Tennessee State, was uh, a 30-point score, 15-rebound guy in the CBA last year. Boston up on Cleveland at Cleveland. That's impressive by a deuce in the fourth. Orlando got one for two. Pistons by ten. Anthony. Starks on the baseline. Ewing. Pocket pick by Isaiah. And it's off Patrick and out of bounds. George, the Piston defense tonight has been absolutely sensational. There's been no hesitation whatsoever. The traps, the rotations have been as good as they've been all year long. Gerald fouled twice by Starks and called the second one. The Pistons host Patrick Ewing, you know, on the next, next Sunday. There'll be Isaiah Thomas Beach Towers for the first 4,000. Brought to you by our good friends at the Wellness Play. Well, the Pistons are now in the bonus the rest of the period with 7.36 to play. And yet, at the other end of Pistons, with only one team foul right now. We've got a wellness plan. Coach's Corner at Buddy's coming up Thursday night on Northwestern Highway. We'll announce the player that will join Brendan, sir, and me on tomorrow night's telecast. You know, normally, when you're in such a situation, you might want to tell your team that you can pick up your defensive intensity because you got about two or three minutes, four minutes before you get in the bonus. But the Piston defensive intensity has been so good tonight. I mean, you don't want to say anything. Exactly. I know I wouldn't. You're perfect. Joe D makes two. Pistons by a dozen. Wilkins, Oakley, Ewing, Mason, and Greg Anthony. For New York. Pistons with their biggest lead. Anthony from the way. It's a brick. Woolridge races it down. Mark Jackson's going to check back in for Anthony after that shot. Pat Riley will make that move. Joe D from the foul line extension doesn't get it. Tapped around. Oakley's got it. Way up court to Wilkin. Gerald gets the hoop and the foul. Charles Oakley can really throw ball out the passes. And what you have to do is when he gets a rebound, you've got to jump up and jam him and make him reload. Sean fell down. He was able to see over. And the ball went right by Joe. Joe turned a little bit too late to see the basketball. And that's what happens. A little bit of a breakdown and boom. A quick three-point play possibility anyhow. Joe's foul. Gave him a chance. Oakley makes it a four-point trip. Sticking back to miss for a score. And we have six and fifty left. Pistons 84, the Knicks 76 in New York. The crowd hollering for some defense. It's a turnover. Bill Lambeer set a screen out of bounds. The screen out of bounds. Right. Screen out of bounds is set by Woolridge. Can't screen people out of bounds. You gotta be on the floor. And if you're just touching the baseline, you're out of bounds. Mason. Air balls it. 
Oakley knocked down. Oakley really stopped to throw his weight around inside. The guy's a major league rebounder. As Starks misses his shot, you'll see Oakley just using his strength to move Woolridge out of the way. Dennis Rodman will replace Orlando. Well, coming into tonight's game, Oakley only needed 41 more rebounds to reach 6,000 for his career. It's a pretty big number. It's in his seventh year. An especially big number when you think of that. Back down, offensive foul, Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson complaining that Zeke had a hand on him. He's just clearing him off. Didn't like the fact that he got called for the offensive foul. He clearly pushes off. You can see the arm extend. The hand was in the cookie jar there. Bill Lambeer. Nails it. What concentration Billy's had in the last two games. Unbelievable. Outstanding screen by John Sally, freeing Bill up. He has 20. Sally gets Ewing on the shot, though, with 5 and 51 left, and the Pistons leading the next by 10 at the Garden. That's Ewing's first shot from that side of the floor tonight because the Pistons are able to get to him quickly when they come from the top. Why not drive to the next Pistons home game in style, run a 92 luxury car for budget, the smart money's on budget, official sponsor of the Pistons and the Palace. Orlando Woolridge will replace John Sally. Sally has five fouls. Most probably Lambeer will move over and play Ewing, but Chuck could also swing Worm over there. Because Worm does a pretty good job in spite of the size uh, mismatch. Bill Lambeer has three fouls. Isaiah by himself from the corner. Rodman's tap won't go either. Pistons ran that play really well. He got a wide open look. Five and a half to go. They lead him by eight. Mark Jackson against the captain. Sets up Wilkins for three. Won't go through. Mason wrestled the rebound away but fell out of bounds with it. Woolridge running out and challenging Wilkins. And when you do that, you send a big guy out on a small guy, you're going to have a mismatch on the glass. And anytime you can come away with a loose ball or whatever, you take it and run. With Mason and Oakley and Ewing, it's a very, very strong front line on the glass. Bill Lambeer with Orlando and Worm and Isaiah and Joe. Isaiah gets the handoff on the drive. An offensive foul's been called on Worm. On the handoff, Worm turned into, I believe it's Mark Jackson. Let's take a look. He's just, well, I don't know. He didn't touch anybody. Did not touch anyone from that angle. Tough call. Tough and his call. fifth. Well, they're going to have to play through it now. You, or Oakley, rather, makes the second time a charm. Six-point game. Just under five to go. 86-80 Pistons. Sally on the bench with five. Warm on the floor with five. Isaiah over everybody, and he hit it. Falling out of bounds. What a big time basket by the captain, 88-80. Try that sometime. <laughs> See how easy it is. Absolutely sensational. Jackson off his spin, gives to you, and Patrick drains it. Just a battle, George. Great game. Playoff intensity. See him play off basketball here tonight. And New York knocks it away. Four minutes to go. They're within six. Pistons defending so well. Ewing avoided the slap away, missed the shot. Warren with the rebound. 
Billy distorted Ewing's shot with the slap. Shot clock already at 10. Now it's at five. Bill Lambeer buries it. Another big time basket. Nice pass by Woolridge. Good job of draw and kick. 22 for Bill Lambeer. The Pistons by eight. Timeout, Nick. Three and 18 left in New York. This is the Pistons Television Network. Pistons by eight in New York, three and 16 to go. What's been a very good basketball game with, as Ron Rostein said, playoff intensity. Mark Jackson. This is to Ewing for the top side pop. Ball drop. Long rebound to Joe. Oh, did he take Ewing away? And he lays it up and in. Looked like a halfback running through the secondary. So smart. Used good pace. Sealed people off with his body. New York gets a miss with a top side gun. And Chuck Daly has his team up 10 with 2 and 44 to go. We had a Boston Cleveland score for you. And then we got Cleveland up by one with 20 seconds remaining. Pistons, of course, if they could hang on here, and Cleveland could win at the Coliseum in Richfield. It would pull even record-wise with the Celtics. They're going to have to beat them by one now since they have lost the season series. But New York goes to Boston tomorrow night when the Pistons go to Philly for another Piston Network telecast. Bill Lambeer after the upfake missed the glasser. Chases the rebound down, though. Two and 20 to go. 92, 82 Pistons in New York against the Atlantic Division leading Knicks. Isaiah using that clock. Sets up Lambeer as a four and he knocks it down over you. What a night for Billy. Two dozen for Bill Lambeer. He's 11 for 19. Jackson with the run and gun. He got it back for New York. Ten point game. One and 45 to go. Way outside to the captain from Woolridge. Clock at seven, a minute and a half left. Dennis Rodman runs the baseline and lays it in. Oakley shoved Isaiah into our bench. Isaiah shoved him back, and Oakley hit him in the face. Charles Oakley hit him in the mouth. I'll tell you what, I, I, I really believe Charles Oakley needs an attitude check. He took a cheap shot at Isaiah, threw him right into our table here. Or a shrink. That was, that was uncomfortable. Well, he's not a brain surgeon. And that is an injection. Flat out dirty plate. See you later. See you later, Charles. Goodbye. Good night. You know, it's easy to be a good guy and happy and everything when things are going well. The sign of a man is how you take adversity. I don't think he took it particularly well tonight. Well, they won't let him shoot in the Riley regime, and somewhere buried in there, I got to feel some animosity. He's always loved to jack up shots he should never take, and this year, Pat Riley hasn't let him do that. Well, he, I tell you what, he has subverted uh, his ego, and he's blended in really well, and he's uh, accepted his role. But I think he came out with an attitude from the get-go tonight. Very, very chippy early on. Took a lot of shots at a lot of people. School is out in this one. Isaiah makes the tech. The Pistons have him down 13. New York embarrassed here at home. And Oakley added a little insult to the injury. Pistons have just been absolutely outstanding tonight, uh, George. I really don't know if they could have played any better. Wilkins with a steal. Don't get hurt, Billy. Game's over anyway. Jackson hooks it up and in. Easy now, George. He's got a nice lead. Mark Jackson cuts it to 
54 seconds to go. And we'll get a timeout. Now, this this is the Pistons Television Network. Real good time. Dribble handoff. Isaiah and Lambeer. Ewing goes under and then tries to get through. Nothing but some sweet string music there. What a game for Bill Lambeer. He has 24. Got a lot of heroes tonight, George. Oh, yeah, he's not the only one, but 11 for 19. Off your bench is strong. Oh, there's an ill-advised pass. Wilkins has it blocked by Ward. Starts back to the rim. This is a seven-point game with 40 seconds to go. And the Pistons will take another timeout. 97-90. The Pistons lead the Knicks in New York. Timeout on the Pistons Television Network. We're on the air again tomorrow night. This one's not in your TV guide. At 7.30 against Charles Barkley and the 76ers from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Pistons and Sixers on the Pistons TV network tomorrow night at 7.30. Trying to hang on here in New York. 97-90. Joe D out of the backcourt. Fouled by Mark Jackson. That's exactly who the Pistons want at the foul line. Great Piston defense. Here's a sensational play, Ronnie. Well, see, Pistons being double and triple team. Nobody coming to the ball forces Billy to throw it up. Watch Worm. No, thank you. We'll not accept that basket at this time. <laughs> you thought you had it, but oh. you don't. Just the, a great hustle play by Worm, who's really had a big game again tonight. Solid, solid game. How about six or eight from the floor? Yes. A little offensive uh, help there. Joe D makes twice, 99-90. And we'll get a timeout taken by the Knicks now with 39 seconds to go. Pistons by nine at Madison Square Garden. Timeout in the closing seconds on the Pistons Television Network. Here's your chance to be part of the team. Sign up for the Upper Deck Honorary Six-Man Contest. Fill out any Upper Deck foil pack. Send it to the Pistons offices. Winners get a locker room tour and on-court picture. Pistons by nine. 39.9 .9 seconds to go in New York. Kiki Vandoway triggers to Mark Jackson. They've got to have a triple. Starks is the guy. From the corner, 4-3, won't go through. Worm with a rebound, and school is out. Great switch out by John Sally, and challenge of that jump shot, like a little man. John's had a big game defensively. Block shots, been active, worked the glass. Imagine Chuck Daly's back's feeling a little bit better. Certainly his team is playing so much better. Pat Riley and Dick Carter had won seven of nine before tonight and two out of three. Isaiah at the line after the quick Nick foul. And they did score 100. Close to 100. Thank you. Done a good job on the glass. Have contained and controlled Ewing. The keys to winning. All were met by the squad tonight. Isaiah makes twice. Jackson to the rim. Scoops and scores. 101-92. Ewing will make the inbound pass tough, but the bounce goes to Bill Lambeer. Bothered, fouled, no whistle. Gathers himself, sees the open man. John Sally won't take the slam. Dennis Rodman with a nice reverse off the window. And a wave at the crowd. It's 103-92. Vandaway over Billy. Hits the glasser. But with seven seconds to go, the Pistons are going to walk out of here winners. What a big win. Great victory.
The final score in New York, the Pistons 103 and the Knicks 94. This is the Pistons Television Network.